Okay, so some people are asking, why wouldn't I get this Medicare Supplement Plan G? And others are saying, hey, why am I paying these high premiums for Plan G when I can get on a Medigap Plan N or I can get on a Medicare Advantage plan like my neighbor and pay zero premium per month and get free dental, vision, and hearing and a prescription plan and a gym membership? Well, today I'm going to go over Medicare Supplement Plan G and some of its competitors so that you can make a decision on whether or not this is the best plan for you. I'm going to do this through data and actual numbers so that you can see in this chart so you can make a decision. So let's jump into it. So first we have the ultimate advantage plan. So that word advantage. Now you've probably seen some people call it disadvantage. Some people love these plans. Let's get into the numbers. So I did for somebody turning 65 who's a male, I did the average number that they're going to pay for a Medicare supplement plan G. As you can see right here, it's a $140 premium each month for the entire year. That's the average. Some will pay less, some will pay more. Then I have the Medicare Advantage plan on the top line here, which is the zero premium, which is all of the commercials that you see with Joe Namath and JJ Walker, Dynamite, and I think Joe Theismann and probably I don't even watch that much TV. I don't watch any TV. So I don't really see these commercials unless it's on the internet, but sort all sorts of other famous people. So then you have those plans. Then we have the Medigap plan N and this is becoming extremely popular. So I want to go over these three plans so that you can make a decision on what's best for you. So right off the bat, if you're age 70 or if you're 75, I'm going to go over some of the numbers for you, but you can just basically uh, tack on, let's say $15 per year, maybe $20 just to, you know, uh, keep it simple. But I'll explain how you can save money with either any of these plans in just a minute. So the plan G, let's start out with that. You pay $140 each month. You pay nothing when you go to the hospital. So basically the plan G, with the Medicare Part A, which is hospital, they have a deductible. The Plan G wipes that out. You pay nothing for inpatient services, which is hospital, skilled nursing, and sort of those sort of things. Skilled nursing being when you're in uh, inpatient. So what doesn't it pay for? There's only one thing it doesn't pay for when it comes to hospital and medical coverage. That's $226 per year, if you can see on this second line. 2023, $226 for the entire year. That's the deductible. You pay that, you pay nothing else for hospital and doctor. So what could beat this plan? Well, let me get into some of the other plans and I'll explain what they have, what the plan G doesn't have, and you make the decision. And in the end, I'll give you my opinion. So 140 times 12 plus 226, and this is what you pay for the year. $1,906. Now, if your premium is more than this, just times it by 12, add that 226. Medicare Plan G is standard throughout the entire country. The plan does not change. If you have it in Massachusetts or if you have it in California, Florida, wherever, it doesn't change. If you have the plan from Aetna, from Cigna, Humana, Transamerica, it does not change. Plan G is a Plan G. So these numbers are an average. The only thing that changes is the premium, not the coverage. So times your premium by this, add the 226, and there it is. So for this particular person that is 65 years old, this is the max that they're going to pay for hospital and doctor, $1,906. The question is, will you pay that for the best coverage in the entire country? I have never, and I have hundreds and hundreds of clients on Plan G. I've never had one complain about the coverage. Later on in the video, I'll get into some of the complaints, but usually when I talk to them about these complaints, they say, you know what? I, was, I didn't know about that. I'm great. Next, we have the Medicare Advantage plan. Now, this is the thing about Medicare Advantage. Every single year, they have all these commercials. Everybody's like, am I missing out? You have a neighbor across the street. You go out to dinner. Maybe you play pickleball and someone says, I'm paying zero premium or I'm paying next to nothing, $50 a month. And I went and had a surgery and it cost me nothing or it cost me $300. Well, I want to go into those plans so that you know 
hey, I didn't understand this or this is what it is. So what they do, what they give you to get you into the plan and entice you into the plan is they, a lot of them give you a zero premium. You pay nothing each month. So, and I'm sorry I'm drinking coffee, but to keep me awake, I guess. So the premium is zero. I get the question, how can they charge zero? It's very simple. The government subsidizes these, these plans. What does that mean? That means if they lower, if the subsidies lower, if the government stops giving as much money to these plans for to have these plans, they're going to raise the premiums, most likely. I've seen this before. There might be some agents that are watching this video. If they've been an agent for over, let's say, 12 years, 10 years approximately, they have seen all of this before. This is why sometimes, I mean, younger agents are great. They're hustling. They're working hard. Hopefully, they work with somebody who's an older agent that can tell them, hey, this is the way it used to be, and it could possibly come back because that's where we're at right now. So zero premium. Could that go up? Yes. And once you go into a Medicare Advantage, they will ask you health questions to go back into a Medigap plan. Not, I'm going to say 99% of the time because I don't want to be 100% on anything because if somebody if something changes, I don't want you to say, hey, you are, you mis, misread this or whatever. 99% of the time, you have to go through underwriting to get in a Medigap plan. You could be stuck in a Medicare Advantage for the rest of your existence unless they change the laws. But premium zero, if that goes up, think about this. So if a company, picture any company, I won't name any names, they're charging a zero premium. Let's say the subsidies go down, but let's say the subsidies do not go down. Let's say they stay the same. If the plan, the company decides, you know what, we're going to charge $25 a month instead of zero, just think about this from a business perspective. $25 a month. Let's say that they have 2 million clients on the plan. That's $50 million profit just by raising the premium to 25. Would you stay in the plan for $25 a month? Still cheap. My guess is that 90%, maybe 95% of the people will. not. They will not leave because of that small premium. When it goes to $50 a month, maybe 85% will stay. When it goes to 75, from what I've seen, people start thinking and say, hey, this is getting expensive. When it goes to 100, everybody's looking for different plans. Now, the hospital coverage, a lot of these, $300 a day, $250 a day. Okay, how many days are you in the hospital? Well, I was in there three days. That's $750. Now, is every plan $250? No, I've seen them $300. I've seen them $225. I've seen them $175. But a lot of times they're on average 250 for all these different plans that I looked at. So what does that mean? Well, for the first six or seven days, that's the way these plans work. You're going to pay 250 and then they'll give you the rest for free. But here's the catch. Let's say you're in the hospital for three days. That's $750. Say a month later, you go back in and you're there for four days. That's $1,000. This keeps adding up as you go. So, okay, that's one thing that could add up. So if you never go in the hospital, great. This plan is fantastic. Doctor's visits. Well, a lot of these plans, the Medicare Advantage, I should go like this with the blue. A lot of these plans, the, the primary care physician is free. And once again, this is an enticing thing. Wow, this is zero to go to my primary. How many times do you go to your primary? Most people have specialists, cardiologists, whatever they, dermatologists, whatever they may be. It's $35 each time you go. Now, you might say, that's not so bad. If I go 10 times a year, it's only $350. That's true. This is not a big ticket item. But look at the next item. The CAT scans slash MRI PET scans. These can be $300, $275. These can add up. So if you're paying $300 for an MRI and you have three of them, that can add up plus the hospital stay. Here's where it gets a, a little bit itchy for the Medicare Advantage. And I'm going to go into the Plan G, so don't leave me quite yet. I'm going to compare all of these. I just wanted to go into Plan G real fast and then over to the other plans. Skilled nursing for Medicare Advantage, you get 20 days. Plan G, you get 100. I have heard of people that have been in skilled nursing for over 90 days, and they paid nothing. The big kicker is 
the max out of pocket. Seventh for the Medicare Advantage. I looked at this before I started doing this video. I looked at the uh, and I should I should have put it up here in a chart and scrolled down. But I looked in different zip codes because I spoke to people in different states this morning. Six thousand something out of max out of pocket. And what that means is you will pay up until this amount and then the plan will cover the rest. But what this means is if you go all the way up now, you might only go up to three thousand dollars. 2000 maybe you go up to nothing maybe you never go to the doctor but there is a chance that you could pay this maximum so you have to watch out for this number and then of course the the moving down here the drug plan they entice you by giving you a drug plan for free still pay co-pays and and whatnot but it's it's free for the drug plan but you have to stay with that company so whatever the company name is that you have the medicare advantage you're going to have that same name for drug plan and they will give you a dental vision and hearing possibly for free. Same thing. You'll have that plan. So you have to ask your dentist, do you take this? Then the big kicker is the gym membership. I don't know why this is so big for people. Maybe they go to the YMCA. It's a hundred dollars a month. These plans, a lot of times will give you that for free through sil silver sneakers or silver and fit or global fit or whatever it's called. Have to ask yourself, is the gym membership worth as much as having the best health coverage in the country? To me, it's no, you have to make that decision. So let's move on to the plan N, and this is the big thing. So plan G, I just went over that. 140 a month, turning 65, hospital zero, 226 for the entire year. So you times this by 12, add 226, here you go, 1906. Now, the plan N, what is the difference? Well, I'll tell you what the difference is. You have this 106, same as plan G, multiply it by 12, because that's the premium you're going to pay the company. Then you add the 226 uh, to this, you know, 106 times 12 plus 226. Then you add up to $20 each time you go for outpatient services. This is like your doctors, physical therapy, that type of thing. I put in here, you go to the doctors 20 times. And so I added that up and came up with this number total. You're going to get the same benefits for inpatient, skilled nursing, CAT scans, and so or CAT scans would be an outpatient uh, thing, but I added it up, and if you went and did 20 outpatient services and they charge you the full amount of $20, you would come up with this. So here's your plan G at 1906, here's your plan N at 1898. Now you might say, well, I'm not going to the doctors 20 times. Well, add 200. So now I take 200 off of this. So let me scroll down and show you some more information. This is what both of these plans cover. The Part A coinsurance and hospital costs, the Part B. Now here's the thing. A lot of times you're going to look at this and say, okay, what is this? That's why I actually went over the plan first and just gave you the clean version. Now this is the version that you're going to see everywhere, the written stuff. It covers skilled nursing. It covers Part A deductible. It covers this. Okay, I went over that with both of these. But what did I not go over? I didn't go over that plan N has a possibility of an excess charge. So what is an excess charge? There's actually one more thing I didn't discuss with the plan N. That's a $50 emergency room that's waived if you go into the hospital. $50 is not that much. But the excess charge, let's go over that. So... First off, if you live in one of these states and you go to the doctor hospital in one of these states, you don't have to worry about it. But the excess charge is if a doctor or hospital does not accept Medicare's uh, payment, they can charge up to 15% on top of what the Medicare allotted payment is and you owe that 15%. Is this a big deal? No, I don't think it's a big deal. Number one, I came from Pennsylvania. I have hundreds of clients. I think I have probably 400 and something clients in Pennsylvania alone. And so I net, when I was putting people on a plan N, I didn't deal with this before, but now I'm not living in Pennsylvania. And plus I have clients throughout different parts of the country, throughout the entire country. And so I see this, I have to look at different things. I have I seen them pay excess charges? No, I haven't personally had someone call me and say, you know what, I got screwed, I had to pay this excess charge. But that doesn't mean it can't happen. 
So let's scroll back up to the two plans. What do I think about the plan G? Well, this is a true story. This a uh, couple days ago, I got an email from my uncle. Why didn't I get back to him right away? Because I'm busy like crazy because it's open enrollment season. But I got back to him to, this morning at 6 a.m. I think it was 6 a.m. I e emailed him back, asked him a few questions. He sent me back uh, an email of what he wanted to know. He is on a G plan. He's 70 years old. He gave me his zip code. I, I have his thing anyway, but gave me a zip code, said, am I still on the right plan? So I went through this, I went through his plan, saw what he was paying. As of now, $147 a month for a plan G. He's 70. So he's right around this average for a 65 year old. I don't know how he did this. I, he, he basically, his plan didn't go up that much over the years and he didn't start at 140. He probably started lower, but I wrote him an email and this is what I said. I'm not going to read it verbatim, but I said, you are on the top plan in the country. The only thing you have to pay besides your premium when you go to the doctor or hospital is this 226. You probably have seen the Medicare Advantage commercials and they're enticing you to look at what, what am I missing? What am I doing? But he's basically paying two grand a year, 2200 whatever for the year for the best coverage in the country. And I've had other aunts and uncles on this plan also, and I still do. Do not get enticed by the Medicare Advantage plan. And I also said... If you want to change your drug plan or you want dental vision and hearing if you don't have it and possibly gym membership, we can talk about that. Or I don't know if you were looking at the plan N, but the reason why I wouldn't put you on this is because of that excess charge and because of this $20 fee. I wouldn't want you to get burned by that and you're not paying that much money. As a 70 year old, you have the best in the country. The only thing he wrote back to me was, oh, I just got a letter stating that they're going to lift my payment to $165. That's why I was asking. I wrote this whole long email for no reason. He was just getting, uh, his premium had gone up uh, for the start of the year and he was just wondering why. So I actually ran his numbers and his premium is still ten within $10 of what the least expensive premium for this plan G in his zip code. I said, don't move. You're, you're in the best position you are. He's never going to call me and say, my nephew screwed me. This plan is horrible. It's never going to happen. So that's why I choose the plan G. Both my parents are on the plan G. I have aunts and uncles on the plan G. And I always tell people about the plan G first. And then I sit, talk, talk to them about the plan N because there's nothing wrong with the plan N. You can save a lot of money. Look at this. $140, $35 cheaper per month. But like I said, if you're going to the doctor, if you're using it, going to outpatient services and so forth, you're going to pay a little bit uh, more and it could equal the same amount as the G. But I think I went over my thoughts about the plan G. I would never tell anyone that this plan is terrible. Now, one thing I wanted to do, I hope you stayed this long in the thing, in the uh, video. I wanted to show you some of my clients base. Now, I do have some people on PPOs and HMOs. That's what they wanted. They called me and said, this is what I want. And if you look down my client list, I just want to go into, you know, plan N, plan G, N, 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 G, 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 N, you know, whatever it may be. I'll scroll slowly. You can see the payments down here. Now, some of them, if you can see the, the dates on here, um, some of them, you know, they just got on it this year, 2022, some 2014. You can see I have different companies, Aetna, Cigna, Medico, Transamerica, plan G, plan N. I scroll down. You're gonna keep. Oops. You're, you're gonna keep seeing uh, the cost go up because I did this by cost. So different people got these at different times, and I switched their plans to save them money. So I can scroll all the way down, all the way down. 190, 200, 210. I mean, it's just gonna keep going with all my clients and what they're paying. But look at this. I'm looking at. I don't know if you can see this, but I'm looking at the ages: 73, 72, 75. So let's take 72. They're paying 237 dollars. That's not a lot of money for the best coverage. So then I got someone 84 years old, just switched switched this year. I put in the new payment in uh, light red. It's, it looks brown. 252. 
That's what they're paying, 84 years old for a G plan. They were able to switch this year because they're healthy or they don't have anything major. But I could keep scrolling and go into the 300s and then the 400s. I have actually uh, clients on uh, the, the, well, now you're starting to see the F plan. Now, let me just real quick. F is a plan that, you know, for the uh, before 2020, a lot of people were on. I have since, you're going to see a lot of Fs up here. I didn't look at that. But the reason being is because if you see they're in red, I wasn't able to switch them for another company, most likely because they have something that's keeping them back, like that maybe they have AFib or maybe they have, I mean, one person I'm looking at, dementia, all these different things. But most of my F clients, I have switched them into a G if I was able to. I hope this video helped. Let me go back to this. If you have any questions about this, you can reach me at the phone number on the screen. I love doing these data uh, points because this really gives you the meat and potatoes and lets you make a decision on what plan you want. Thanks for watching this video. I have some other videos that I'm going to put up on the screen right now. Click on one of them. Check out some of my other videos so that you can make a decision on your Medicare package and what the best thing is for you. Take care. Thanks for watching.